Hello everyone, welcome to this new section where we are going to automatically use no code tools to parse data from websites. So first of all, we have collected all our movie plots data from Wikipedia using Beautiful Soup. The problem is that as websites get more and more complex, there's a lot of dynamic content, JavaScript, etc. And much beyond that, a lot of them have IP blocking. So if you try to parse from a single IP, you get blocked. Secondly, if they detect that a code is running and parsing the data, you get blocked. There are some ways using Python, which is you can probably emulate a headless browser as well. Essentially speaking, IP rotation, headless browser and many other complexities, uh, frequent parsing and other things are not easy to be done with coding. That's why we have quite a lot of tools like Parse Hub, Octoparse, Appify, all these no code tools that have come up to make parsing easier. So what are we going to do now? We are going to parse data from Y Combinator site. Essentially Y Combinator is a startup incubator or accelerator. Just go to Google and type parse hub. If you just go to parse hub and click on this uh, download parse hub for, for free. If you click on the download parse hub for free, you see that there's one for Mac, one for Windows, one for Linux. Just download that and I've already installed parse hub in my system. I've followed the similar procedure and you can look at the pricing as well. The thing is that I want you to understand that you can only parse like 200 pages of data in one run. So we are going to use the free version and see and understand how it works. But at the end of the day, you can use any tool like Parser, Octopus, Appify or any of the automated no code web scrapers that are available, whichever fits your bill. But the focus of this lecture is not the exact tool, but rather the showing the power of web parsing to collect your own data sets from any website or article, etc. So what we are doing now is actually I went to ycombinator.com slash top companies and you have these top companies here, Airbnb, Stripe, Instacart, etc. Let's see how we can scrape these data as well as go to each of the link, let's say Airbnb. And how can we get more data from here? Um, the content that's here, etc. Let's see how we can do that. First grab this URL ycombinator.com slash top companies. Then later open Parse Hub and click on new project. Once you click on new project, you'll get to this page. Here enter the URL that you want. Y Combinator top companies and click on start project on this URL. Now once the page is loaded, you get to this. Okay, when you first land on this page, now we need to select our first element. Uh, let's say I'm highlighting Airbnb, only Airbnb and clicking on this. This is my first item selected. And as you can see, there are yellow buttons here and it is asking us to click on this thing as well. Why are we doing this is simply just like in beautiful soup, we identified repeating elements that had same ID or class attribute. Similarly, once we select an element in Parsum, behind the scenes, it's going through the HTML code and identifying similar elements and asking us to confirm whether we want to select all the repeating elements with the similar ID or class, whatever attribute that it has. So I'm clicking on Stripe to confirm. You can see that this is this will change from one, one to whatever number that's here, how many of our companies are here. As you can see, we have 271 companies. And uh, we can also see how our output CSV looks at the moment if we run this, which is we have company name and the URL that's corresponding to it. And
and uh, what we are going to do is add a third column which is the description of the company so let's call this selection one as company awesome so now it's called as company underscore name and company underscore URL let's do this which is click on this plus and relative select now you need to select relatively to what your input was so click on Airbnb first then relatively select this description once that is selected again you need to repeat the same thing which is click on stripe and click on the second one so that we are telling that it's repeated selection because you, you can see at the moment there's only one in this company selection awesome so change this relative selection to let's say uh, description So you can see that we have company name, company URL, description. Even if we just run this now, we are going to get this uh, get this in a CSV format for all the companies. But what we are going to do is actually go inside this Airbnb URL and grab the data of it. So we are going to go to the top level company. Now instead of relative select, we are going on click. So it's going to click into Airbnb's page. And now we'll, it will ask us whether it's next page button or not. So if you have a lot of companies or a lot of data, you have page nation, so next page, etc. But here we are actually going on to a new page, not next page and page, page nation so we are clicking on no now it's asking us to create a new template so let's call it uh, results template one yeah that's good enough let's create a new template and within this template what we want to extract is we already extract a name and description uh, why don't we extract this whole P element that's there so we get all the company description awesome I think we got the value that we want and uh, yeah perhaps that's the only thing that we want to extract from sub pages now you can go on to the main template and uh, just click on uh, get data and run the full run now it's uh, running and you need to remember one thing that since we can only collect 100 pages that is even if you go on to airbnb url or stripe url separately that's also calculated as a page and with the free version that we have we can only parse maybe 200 pages in total as you saw in the pricing page so overall once this reaches 200 even if we have more companies i don't think we are going to parse it uh, parse up will stop at 200 companies so i'm not keen on like collecting all the data but rather i just wanted to make sure that the parser parser works so i uh, cancel the run runs in the middle but nevertheless the partial output should be saved and you should be able to see if you can use this procedure to parse the data or not let's save this let me just rename this as uh, YC top companies let's see if we are able to fetch the data
so I have this expander view and uh, you can see that I have the company name and the company URL the short description and from the second page that we went we collected this long description and for all the companies uh, Dropbox, Razorpay, uh, Zapier all these companies we have the description as well as the long description so this is how you can collect data with no code this is collected completely without any uh, coding experience whatsoever the only thing is that if you want to do it at scale and over multiple uh, pages etc probably you need to pay for the right tool and get on to the premium plan but the goal of this was to show that it's possible to use no code tools and have IP rotation and other things so that you don't get blocked and you can parse all the data that you want awesome if we extend this same approach to parsing the movies that we have so there shouldn't be any problem in parsing the year URL uh, but when it comes to individual movie URL I think since we have multiple paragraph elements we need to write some custom uh, code within Parsehub. So Parsehub has advanced features where you can give uh, your code some CSS selections or also XPath etc. So simply what that means is that most of the things you should be able to do it without code and just showing what elements need to be parsed etc. But sometimes when Parsehub fails to do that you can also give code and advanced path selection with CSS etc and achieve the task that you want. I hope uh, you like the second part where we have created a novel data set without any code at all. And uh, this should open up new opportunities because oftentimes whenever we think about a data set we go and see if it's available in Kaggle or Hugging Face data sets and if it isn't available there then it's pretty much end of the road for most people but I want you to open up to the idea that you can actually go ahead and create your own data sets and use them to train your model etc. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next section.